Hey, you guys and gals, and every here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something you know on sort of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode. Of, oh, blah! A Let's Play episode of What It Feels Like. So, yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards, like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming non safe for work videos. Sorry if my words are a little bit slurred, y'all. I just, uh. Did. I just, uh. Hmm. I just got up and got my. Got, got my, uh. Brains fucked out. <clears throat> mm, mm. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't say anything. Okay, alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Still a little out of it. Okay. He nudges me with his elbow and gets on the bike, and with mild reluctance, I put on the helmet and place myself behind him on the seat. Ever been to one? Ever been on one of these before? Nope. Yeah, I can tell. I, he can hold on to me, you know. My hands are fiercely gripping the handle on the back of my seat, and I shake my head. I'm good. You know, if you we're gonna be spending time together, you might as well get used to being around me. What better way than seeing than some skinship? <laughs> well, you watch those eyebrows, man. You watch those eyebrows, you son of a bitch. Are you always this, uh, flirty? Pretty much. Is that a bad thing? Well, that'll take some getting used to. He just grins and turns to face forward, and with a kick, the bike purrs to life. Looking forward to that, then. And with a rev of the engine, we speed away into the street. The ride home is treacherous, to say the least. Not even a minute after he starts driving, I let go of the handles and hug his body close to mine for stability, because this guy drives like a fucking maniac. Takes a lot of shouting directions and brisk turns to finally reach the front of my house, and when we come to a stop, Baxter has to has to pat at my hands to make me pry myself off of him. Damn, what a grip! Didn't want to let go? I take the helmet off and practically throw it at him, out of breath despite sitting down the whole time. I'm never getting on your bike again. Ha! Oh, come on. Was it that bad? Yes. Why do you drive so fast? <clears throat> These streets are always empty. Besides, I'm a great driver. I beg to differ. My apologies, then, my liege. Ah! I adjust my jacket, trying to calm down a bit. When I turn back to him, he's leaning coolly on his bike, arms crossed, staring right at me. Yeah, no doubt about it. <laughs> Baxter makes me nervous. Whether it's because he's so extroverted or the fact that he's a teeny tiny that a teeny tiny part of me finds him alluring, I couldn't say for sure. But having him look at me like he's trying to figure me out makes me want to run and hide for cover. Um, thanks for the ride. My pleasure. Also I like how his eyes are gems. <laughs> so, what was how important you had to drive me home in that in that hell on wheels? I wanted to ask you something, and I hope you don't take it the wrong way. I know we just met, but I really wanted to ask you this. My heart skips a beat and I suck in a breath, crossing my arms to mirror his position. Um, that sounds kind of serious. A little. Are you dating Jacob Song? Sorry? Are you dating Jacob Song? He asked it again, a bit sterner, staring deeper into my soul than ever before. What? Well, why do you want to know that? I've just seen the way he looks at you. or Well, I see the way he tries not to look at you. What's that? Does I... Oh my god! What does I do? Okay. Oh my god, he's possessed. And I've noticed you at practice a lot. I didn't recognize you from up close earlier today, but I know you're usually there, watching. Shame and embarrassment spreads across my face in an instant, and I look away from him, hoping he'll stop looking at me like that. I'm- I'm not- I'm not some kind of creep, okay? I just- I didn't say that. I don't think that, for the record. I can tell you're embarrassed about it, and I'm trying to figure out why. You're there for him, aren't you? Why are you asking me this? Because I'm curious. And because, well, I want to know how similar your situation is with mine. I look back up at him, those dark red eyes never leaving my face. Yours? He nods. Well, I guess I can't really question you if you don't know about me. <sighs> There's a girl I like, Dahlia. You might know her. The name rings a bell, but no one I personally know. Anyway, she and I have a thing, uh, sort of. It's pretty complicated. He shoves his hands into his pockets and looks away, down the dark sidewalk. I thought we really hit it off. We went on dates, hung out together, a lot. It was per practically perfect. When I finally asked her out, she said she wasn't ready. Said she's not interested in dating, just not something she wants to do right now. I thought it'd be the end of it. 
If it was, I could have moved on pretty easily, but it wasn't. She kept hanging around me, talking to me, treating me like she was really interested in taking things further with me. She tells me she likes me like that, but she doesn't want to commit to anything, and maybe I get it, but man, I wish she did. That's my situation, and from what I've heard, it might be yours, too. Heard from who? He shrugs. No one's specific, but guys on the team ask Jacob about you, like you guys are old friends. So, Jacob was our old band member. He left about a month ago. That's how we know each other. I figured it was something like that. So, what is he to you? I got the music stopped right there, that was good. Um, Jacob and I aren't anything yet. I swallow hard, turning to look at the sidewalk he was glancing at moments before. He doesn't want people to know that he's, uh, that he's, that he likes guys, that he likes me. We just hang out, for now. So it is like me and Dahlia. I shrug. Maybe. You, you're not gonna tell anyone, are you? About Jacob liking dudes? No, of course not. Not my place. Plus, I don't really care. Okay, good. All right, I didn't, uh, didn't just want to make you confess that for the hell of it. There's a second part of this question. Oh. He stops leaning on his bike and steps over to me, standing a few inches in front of me, staring down at my face. Can I put my penis inside? No, 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 no. No, 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 none of that. You sure like, you sure like eye contact? He grins. Do I make you nervous, Russo? No, you just don't know what personal space is. <laughs> yeah, I gotta work on that. He takes a small, insignificant step back, still looking at me. Whoa! Go out with me. What? Yeah, go out with me. Be my boyfriend, that kind of thing. I, what, what, why, are, why are you... Think about it. What if we both completely moved on from them? Dahlia and Jacob. What if suddenly both found someone else? Someone better? Wouldn't that drive them nuts? I bet Jacob's the jealous type. What would he do if the guy who's in love... The guy who's in love with him suddenly f found a hunk way cooler than him? Uh, first of all, you're not cooler than Jacob. Second, why do you think Jacob's the jealous type? Honestly, it's just a hunch. So you're asking me to date you to make our situationships jealous so that we can then... what? When they get jealous, they're going to want to fight for us. Dahlia thinks I'm wrapped around her finger, and well, maybe I am. But what if I wasn't? Wouldn't that bother the hell out of her? Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it bother the hell out of him? He's closer now. The idea of getting him more excited the more he talks. It would make them want us. Really seriously want us. After all, no one really appreciates what they have until they lose it. So let's make them experience that. Let's make them lose us. Don't you think it's about time something changed? Um... All right, yeah, I came off a bit too strong. He takes a couple steps back this time, an embarrassed look on his face. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. It's a big step, a big change. Uh, yeah, we barely know each other, but I figured since we're going to be getting, to, since we're going to be together more often now. But I understand if faking this isn't your kind of thing. He hops on his bike and puts on his helmet, lifting the visor to smile at me. Hope things aren't awkward between us, though. Honestly, either way, I'm looking forward to being your friend. You're a really weird guy, Baxter, you know that? Yeah. He closes the visor and gives me a cute little wave, and as quickly as it was for us to get here, he drives off, disappearing into the darkness of the street. Damn, that is a fucking nice house. My thoughts are going a million miles a minute when I close the door behind me once I'm safely inside my home. Today has been wild. I mean, in one day I've been tasked with doing an important important presentation, found the guitarist for my band, and practically got asked out, even if it, wasn't, even if it was for ulterior, ulterior reasons. All in 24 hours, and all linked back to one guy. Baxter Abernathy. Should have known the second he smiled at me like that. I was in for more than I ever expected. Honey, is that you? Taking you out. My mom, my mom calls out to me from the kitchen as I'm walking up the stairs, and I hear her making her way towards me. Aww. She's cute. Yeah, Mom, it's me. You should have called if you were going to be late. I had the band thing today, remember? My point still stands? Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, next time? 
And aren't you going to have dinner? I told you this morning I was uh, trying going to make us something. I'm not really hungry. I'm just going to go to bed. Milo, you have to eat. I sigh, frustrated. The only thing on my mind now is getting to Jacob's place as soon as I can, and she's wasting my time. I will, just not tonight. <sighs> can you at least make an effort to have dinner with your dad and me soon? It's like we never see you these days. Sure, yeah. Listen, Mom, I'm really tired right now. Can we talk about this some other time? Sure, honey. Go, go get some rest. Thank you. Dude, you're kind of a dick to your mom. Good night. Night, Mom. I rush up the stairs, and before she can try and stop me again, I quickly go into my room and lock the door behind me. I shower. I clean myself everywhere, making sure I smell nice for when I inevitably get undressed by him. I make sure I look my best, brushing my fur in soft, even strokes. After such a long, exhausting day, I can't say that I don't want to just hop in bed and sleep for eight hours I desperately need for cognitive function. This is my only chance. The only time of day I can see Jacob without any repercussions. No teammates, no friends, no outsiders to look and judge. Just four walls... Four walls, me, and Jacob. I don't know when I started escaping from the window. Somewhere in between not wanting to wait for my mom to go to bed and not wanting to get caught if Dad comes home late. But it's a fairly easy climb down considering how slanted the roof is, and in no time at all I'm back outside, making sure I can't be seen from any windows as I make my way out to the sidewalk. Despite my fatigue, all in all, I'm in an excellent mood once, once I'm well on my way to Jacob's place. I found a new band member, I won't be failing finance, and best of all, in less than half an hour, I'll be in Jacob's arms, soaking in his affection. Or will you? The 15-minute walk feels shorter today, much to my pleasure. The moon is shrouded by dark gray clouds, but I'll be sure to see it when I make my way back home. Tonight, there is no man smoking in the steps. Tonight, there are no eyes to see me walk in or out of Jacob's home. Tonight, it's just me and him. I reach the door. Seven. I knock once, and when I hear a shuffling behind the door, my heart skips giddily. It opens, and in the darkness, there he is, shirtless, with that tired look only he can make look, he can make look effortlessly sexy. Hi. Did anyone see you? No. Okay. He opens the door just a crack of morning, eagerly squeeze inside to his little apartment. This, uh... This is not a healthy arrangement you have going, man. The room seems brighter tonight. He walks past me to the couch and falls on it with a sigh, much like he always does. I almost skip over to him, sitting down close, not leaving much space between us. It's better not to waste time. You look happy. I smile at him. Mm, maybe, I'm just in a good mood. Yeah? Why? No reason in particular. He chuckles, leaning closer to me. So, is it just because of me, then? That's definitely part of it. His hand goes to my thigh, and I feel myself blush against his touch. So there is another reason. Well... He leans in Philly and presses his muzzle against my neck, sniffing and licking me. The warmth starts to spread from my neck over to my entire body. I'm happy because I'm not failing finance. He growls in acknowledgement, continuing to lick with more vigor. That's great. Happy for you, baby. I choke back giddy laughter. A stupid grin plastered over my blushing face. God, I love it when he calls me pet names. Mm -hmm. We found a new guitarist, so I'll be playing gigs again real soon. I patiently wait for more praise, but this time he just slowly pulls away to look at me. You're happy you found my replacement? Huh? Well, of course not. That's not why I'm happy. He looks away, annoyed. Right. Jacob, I'm serious. You know that if it were up to me, you'd still be in the band. You didn't even try to get me back in, Milo. Says who? It's not my fault they just don't like you. I'm sorry. It's fine. I really do wish it was you instead. I know. He grabs my arms and pulls me towards his chest, and I sink into him completely. Just being here in his arms, feeling safe with him, isn't this enough? Isn't this all I need? No. No, it's not all I need. Baxter's words echo in my mind. Something about not fighting for me, about not committing, about change. Jacob? Yeah? It's been a while now that you and I have been, well, this. Uh-huh. He sounds like he doesn't like where this is going, and that only makes makes me way more nervous. Actually, I'm going to pause it right there, y'all. 
Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Kate Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to your ultimate tier. Anyway, if you all want to get your names and credits, get access to not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye.